Greetings and salutations to all you folks over there. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to be bringing you a series from the 3 versus 3 tournament that happened last weekend. The search for the Musketeers, as it was so aptly titled. I do not have live coverage of the event because my entire setup just completely crapped out last weekend in the middle of the live stream. I do have everything set back up. Everything is fixed. So the next time that we have a tournament, I will be back on top of things. But for now, I'm going to go through the replays that Rowie was kind enough to round up for me from the tournament. One replay from each map that does not desync, including the semifinal and the final at the end. So we'll get a little bit of a taste of what was going on. The first map I've got for you is Tabula Rasa. On the left hand side, we've got Soil Worker as Seraphim, White Free Owl as UEF, and Inspector Kot as Aeon. On the right team, Silene Undulata taking Aeon on the bottom side, Morax as Seraphim in the center, and Yudi up top with a Seraphim as the faction of choice. Looks like everybody's gone first land factory. Most of these people are rushing for the Hydra. One thing to remember about Tabula Rasa as you're playing, there's a lot of reclaim in the center. Of course, there are some rocks scattered around the outside edges, things to reclaim out there, but your main points of focus are going to be the cluster of units here that are very important to grab as you expand from this slot. Symmetrical placements up there, and then the three clusters of reclaim in the center, some of which is worth quite a good deal. The pools in the middle are deep enough that you can retreat and ACU into them and escape any fire, even area of effect hits from T1 artillery, but overall you do just want to get in, get the wreckages, and make sure that you don't die. On these slots where you have expansions, it's incredibly important to get across and get factories down on the other side. Aeon may not have as much of a problem because they do have the hover tanks and scouts at T1, but if you get locked out, this choke point is very difficult to get through if you lose your foothold. Seraphim also has a better chance of success, but since you can only move artillery across on hover, that means that you might have some difficulty should your opponents get the upper hand with tank numbers. So let's look at what's going on in the middle here. It would appear that Yudi is not heading straight across. He's actually bringing his ACU down towards the middle in order to attempt a double team with his teammate. Morax also moving up, throwing down a land factory very early on. And we do have artillery and tanks moving into the center. Of course, artillery highly useful in situations where the ACUs are caught up in reclaim because if you're reclaiming, you're not moving. And if you're not moving, you're taking artillery fire. So it can work out quite well for everyone involved as long as you're not the one taking the arty fire to the face. White Free Owl actually moving to the center straight across from his base. So he is, nope, he has actually changed. There's probably some communication going on from this team. They've actually shifted northward. So we've got red, purple, and maroon. They're all going to end up spread across the center mass deposits. Yudi moving down next to Morax. So it is gonna be a group of six ACUs in the middle. Gonna have to be careful there because if any one goes up in a nuclear ball of fire, then all six might be in danger. We may get to see a chain reaction this game even. Selen meeting up with a Tham on the north side, not going to be very successful versus the superior firepower. But that tank is not gonna do a whole lot of good on this side due to the fact that there is already a land factory down, so Yudi is going to be relatively well established. Most of these players building power like mad, some doing better than others. Yudi, to name one, who is already up to 380 power income. Of course, if you have the power, you can burn the mass, and that mass definitely needs to be burned as quickly as possible. Even if you can't use all of it, you want to suck up as much as you possibly can, because if you have it, and even if you overflow it, your enemy team does not. Yudi all by his lonesome, picking up those wreckages on the north side. We've got a nice little cluster of three, four ACUs right down here. Two from one team, two from the other, with Arty Flyer Fire flying all over the place as I attempt to get my tongue detached from the roof of my mouth. 
Inspector Cot going to move to the right hand side, try to chase away this artillery that is hammering his teammates as Soil Worker begins to push a huge amount of Zooey's through the middle, starts spreading fire on Selene, Ungulata, and more axes. Commander Selene actually dropping below 7,000 HP in the earliest portion of this game. On the north side, Yudi is doing a fairly decent job of pushing units to the left. If he's able to secure this expansion and deny that, it, that economy from Soil Worker, this could turn out incredibly well for him because he will control two, well, kind of two and a half bases, counting all of the mexes between the two in those expansions. He may not have enough to secure it at the very beginning portion of the game, though, due to the fact that there are already two thams to counter the two over here. Transport out. We'll have to wait and see where those units go. Do not forget that there is reclaim up on the plateaus as well. I forgot that at the very beginning portion of the game. It may be a little too late for Soil Worker to get an engineer up there around his corner, but Silene Undilata is definitely in a position to take advantage of that extra mass. I love the amount of tanks flowing over from Inspector Cot's base. He does have that Aeon advantage like I was saying before and he definitely should be taking advantage of it even further, pushing his tanks up and around to try and get in behind and secure this expansion. There's a nice countering number of tanks out from Silene Undulata, but I think with his production split up, sending units to the front and to the side, he should theoretically be able to outnumber the green and move right into that base. Over here, we can see a double up on assistance. That is probably going to be a gun comm. Yes, it is. So a gun upgrade for the right-hand team. Looks like we've got another gun upgrade going for White Free Owl as well. Nope, that is... Let's see, more access starting T2. Let me see. White Free Owl is also on the T2 upgrade path. Morax is going to double up on those gun upgrades and, or upgrades rather, and Yudi already has his gun upgrade in hand. So this is a dangerous group of ACUs about to be even stronger. And on the south side, they are just not keeping up with the amount of upgrades on those ACUs. Looks like we've got tanks moving into the base, UD overpowering soil workers' number of units, which is not necessarily a surprise considering the rank gap between these players. That's one of the disadvantages when you're trying to go in the team tournaments because it is a total of points where you can have some people that are extremely highly ranked versus some people who are not. And sometimes it doesn't work out like you planned. Soil Worker moving up with his Zooey's, but the Gun Commander, of course, is able to quickly dispatch those without much of a problem. The Artillery does hold a vast advantage over the T1 Commanders, who do not have the gun upgrade. Mixing up my words there just a tiny little bit, because they can't match the range. Almost like the Aurora problem, but maybe a little easier to deal with due to the fact that you can dodge that fire. However, the gun upgrade is going to let you match ranges, and then it's not going to be such an issue to deal with. Point defense going down, which will defend those engineers up in the top side, but Yudi is just going to leave that behind. There's a PD there. Don't need to worry about it. I can just leave it and go kill something more important. I love the bomb drops here. Aurora is, of course, very susceptible Two T1 bombers due to their low health. Pretty much every single T1 unit dies in a single bomb to any of the factions. In the middle, the commanders have decided to engage. Lots of fire being traded. Looks like we've got the T2 upgrade only, but thankfully the right-hand side is missing some HP on these commanders. They're trying to get a couple more T2 point defenses down. Body blocking going on from these commanders trying to keep the T2 point defense alive, but they are not going to be successful. Now they're going to have a little bit of an issue holding this ground. Maybe they can get another PD out. Maybe not. We'll just have to wait and see. Air superiority well in hand from Yudi. He has got quite the pile of interceptors. All three on the left side building air though, so we need to keep an eye out for that because they may quickly outpace the rather meager air production of the other two players 
on the right. Looks like there is a vastly superior number of tanks in soil workers, not soil workers, in Spectre Kot's hands versus Silene Undulata, and he should definitely be moving into this expansion right now. If he takes off, he should be able to take out the entire thing, and that would be a very valuable kill because there's a T2 mass extractor over there along with three, four that are 50% on the upgrade. Silene, very brave or very confident in the amount of reclaim that he can secure can secure going for all of those mass extractor upgrades at the same time looks like morax is joining ud trouncing soil workers base poor guy is knocked down to the bottom of the scoreboard with 13 mass per tick income it is not necessarily over for him but it definitely does not look good they did manage to get a t2 point defense online white free owl going for another upgrade probably gun morax going for gun upgrade as well i suppose he didn't finish it earlier because they dove into combat so he will finish that quite quickly with the t2 build power and then be able to move into a combat stance yudi putting pressure on with his gun commander as well as the unit soil worker dropping to get all of that reclaim in hand to try to help him do something with what little build power he has left. But he is rapidly going to lose that as well, along with all of his P gens. A little bit of movement from Inspector Cot, but he did split his units to move up to the north side and assist these ACUs. I don't know that that was a very smart idea for him. Three ACUs versus the two. With a roughly equivalent number of upgrades, these guys could have kept things well in hand without those units and then he could have crushed this outside expansion but now i think it's far too late as silene will be able to outproduce him by leaps and bounds thanks to that extra eco 69 to 41 and i think that's probably going to be a missed opportunity that he will not get again torpedo launchers going down trying to get some extra damage in on those acus in the water but I don't think that's going to help them out much when Yudi is powering through with his gun upgrade. A fair bit of regen on the UEF commander, slightly more than the Seraphim, but the unit count and the gun comp bearing down on his ACU is going to force a withdrawal to the water. Getting a little low on HP there, bud. Over on the left, we're seeing a growing number of interceptors. Actually, an air win versus Yudi's Inties. He was able, White Free Owl is going to separate and conquer. He is going to take out Orange's air as well. Morax losing all of his interceptors without any intervention from the meager number of Swift Winds and a decent number of interceptors from Silene and Delata. And I think with that count advantage, the left-hand side will now be able to win air superiority. Here comes a Mercy. Yudi out in the open, but Soil Workers at 5k, White Freeze at 7k, and Spectre Cot at 900. He may not want to use that Mercy because there might be a chain reaction. Soil Worker below 2500 health. Yes, Mercy is turned aside. He was going to get Yudi due to the fact that he was going to survive earlier, but there goes Soil Worker, 2k and 1400 remaining. That was very nearly a chain reaction that would have taken out every single ACU in the center. Maybe Morax would have survived. I think he's outside the range of the third ACU, but a dangerous situation nonetheless. Interceptors and Swiftwinds barely tagging out that Mercy. A half a second more and Yudi would have been out and this would have been an even game. But with Yudi's survival and the overwhelming air coverage from the right, I think that that is going to be good game. There's still a slim chance that the south side could recover due to the amount of T2 point events that are online, but the artillery did a number on those T2 point events, and now they are going to start falling to the remainder of the T1 coming through. White Free Owl moving back, attempting to provide cover, reduce the number of units that are coming up against his base, but now he's lost all of his point defense except those in the center. We've got a few gunships out, which means that interceptor production has halted for the left-hand side, and Yudi has now recovered with a large number of interceptors. That is going to spell doom for the left side team. I don't think that there's anything remaining that they can throw at the right to cause any damage. 
Looks like build power is still running on the south side, but there's just not any way that there's going to be enough tanks online to make any kind of push. We've got T2 land from Silene Undulata with his overwhelming amount of eco. Yudi, of course, pulling in all of the resources from the north side as well. This is not going to be pretty. Looks like it might be a slow death by T1 for the left team. White Free Owl moving up, perhaps accepting his fate. Inspector Cot staying in range, trying to deal enough damage to Morax to secure a mutual, but Morax has the nano upgrade. That regen amount is massive. 80 per tick can almost regen the full damage from an unupgraded ACU or a handful of T1 tanks can't even scratch the surface. Gonna move in for that warm hug of nuclear oblivion as the ACUs line up for the death toll. Yudi going to survive due to the second nuke being out of range. And that, folks, is all she wrote. End of round one. All right, that is gonna wrap this one up here. I am going to move on to the next game. Hope to see you guys over there. That is gonna wrap everything up for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like and share it with someone. If you wanna support the channel, catch the streams or join the Discord, check out the links in the description. Thank you all for being at least partially insane, and I will see you in the next one.